panel work that was done on the site. The 2009 conditions assessment and feasibility study uh, said that there was 9.5 million estimated in to rehab the site and stabilize the buildings. They, the concept is a, a cold lighted shell that could have something put into it and be reused for some purpose. But it does not complete the whole project, does not make them completely usable for any particular use. It was, it was important that there was a statement in, in the 2009 study that asked the question, what is appropriate to the site? What uses align with historic preservation objectives and considerations? And what uses can generate sufficient revenue to fix up an aging and derelict building plant and make enough money to keep the, bo the boat afloat? Well, the vision plan came up with a series of ideas. And it, had a, it was led by Union Studios out of Providence, Rhode Island. It, it suggested implementing the plan by steps, a model that's been successfully used in other uh, factory and industrial development, redevelop, reuse projects elsewhere in the, in the uh, state and in the country. And it, it was offering the property for events using the freight building, that's the riverfront building where the Meet Me at the Tremont event is gonna take place. And I have tickets if anybody is interested. <laughs> uh, it was also to consider proposals for compatible uses which would provide rent and plan the zoning to support factory redevelopment and seek funding for waterfront boardwalk that would link the the Tremont Nail Factory with the downtown. Currently, the Tremont Nail Factory is zoned Village 1, which is the same zoning as the downtown. The, the issues with the current zoning are that there are uses prohibited in the, in the existing district that may be appropriate at the Tremont Nail site to meet the um, to meet the vision plan and the mix of uses. This would include health and athletic facilities, apartments in a mixed use building, conference center, hotel, light manufacturing, accessory food and beverage, and marine connected use, which, is, which are uses that use the waterfront. Not generally used when trying to preserve historic structures are setbacks and other dimensional standards. And there may be a case of the uh, subdivision of the property for a development proposal that may, that may apply. And there are performance standards for the existing district that do not include historic preservation standards or the possibilities of a developer's agreement between the town and potential users. So in the initial plan, we had proposed an overlay district that would include allowed uses, expand the allowed uses, uh, set in performance standards, and list the uh, uses that would remain prohibited. So in the concept that uh, we laid out, we included property of the Tremont Nail Factory south of Elm Street <clears throat> and also property north of Elm in the, including the company store, the Fearing Tavern and the bike shop and the uh, Mill Pond Diner. In a meeting with the redevelopment authority, the, the district was cut back to just the, the area south of Elm Street, which is just the Tremont, Tremont Nail Factory property. In the, in the allowed uses, regardless of the underlying zoning, 
there'd be limited restrictions on allowed uses so long as noise, air quality, odors, vibration are all within acceptable units and the use fits into the existing buildings. It would specifically allow for health athletic facilities, apartments in a mixed use building, conference center, hotel, light manufacturing, which could include a jeweler, accessory food and beverage, marine connected use, artist studios, brewery and or distillery, and marijuana product manufacturing. And this is because in the plan for the vision, there was an interim use, an interim plan that, that decided that use of the steel building could be productive by rents that could help pay for things like a museum at the site or even the artist studios, which require <clears throat> some investment to, uh, to take place. So we've been approached by uh, several different users, including the marijuana uh, production facility, <coughs> a, a brewery distillery, and an artist co-op studio, among other uses that have been presented. Uh, we have an opportunity to get, to get rent and value from the site with the, with the change in the, uh, in the zoning. The performance standards would be that there'd be no dimensional standards so long as the affected historic building elements are maintained in conformance with the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation. And this, this is the US, this is the federal standard for all historic preservation. And this would include the uh, reduction of separation standards between different uses. Other performance requirements, such as time and physical limits, payments and penalties agreed to between a project proponent and the Wareham Redevelopment Authority or the Board of Selectmen could not be reduced or superseded by the zoning bylaw. And what that means is, if there's a developer's agreement that comes up that's advantageous to the town, that the zoning wouldn't supersede that, those, those agreements that were put into place. To the board, I've <coughs> attached a list of the, the uses that are allowed within the Wareham Village One District from the zoning bylaw, which shows which ones are, are prohibited and which ones are allowed and which ones are by special permit. Uh, there's also copies of the summary up on the table here in the front if anybody's interested. So that's the sum of the, of the bylaw. Hi, Peter Title, I'm chairman of the Wareham Redevelopment Authority. Uh, it's kind of interesting that in the past, I want to say two months, we've had three different people uh, three different outfits or companies or whatever, three different uh, potential users of the site come forward with uses, none of which would be allowed under the Wareham Village One zoning. Uh, you couldn't have marijuana there, you couldn't have a distillery there, and you couldn't even have an artist studio there. That's how restrictive the Wareham Village One zoning is, uh, which admittedly uh, was designed to protect the downtown area as it was, you know, as it is and as it shall be forever and ever, amen, I guess. Uh, why Tremont Nail was included in this, I really don't know. Uh, somebody who's more well versed in the history of zoning in the town of Wareham could perhaps educate us at some point on that. Uh, given that you know we're talking about an historic property that uh, was an industrial property, it does seem a bit of an inappropriate inclusion into the Wareham Village One district. 
One of the things that's important to realize, too, is that any rents, regardless of who goes out there, uh, at a recent town meeting, we passed a revolving fund, the Tremont Neal Revolving Fund. All rents received from the property have to go into that revolving fund and are to be expended uh, by the town only on the property. So to the extent that revenue is generated from rent, not necessarily from licenses, licensing goes to the general fund, but rents, you know, leases, uh, rents for single events, things of that nature, all are supposed to go into the Tremont Nail revolving fund. Uh, the hope here is that we can get a bylaw through that allows a profitable use to come in, that the rents received from that profitable use can go back into the premises and to help restore it. Uh, I know that uh, Alan was on the Tremont Nail Master Plan Committee for a number of years. I remember that they put out requests for proposals for use of the property. Uh, the only thing that they were actually able to come up with was the thing that actually would be at the tail end of the vi proposed vision plan, which was to put housing on the property eventually. And that was shot down by the then Board of Selectmen. I guess one of the Selectmen wanted to pay less rent or something. But anyway, uh, the vision plan and the proponents, Union Studios, were very declarative in telling us that you want to get the site occupied, you want to get other uses out there before you bring people in. Because no matter what you tell people, once they live there, they instantly become not in my backyard. So for example, everybody saw what we were doing with the freight building last year and the, the idea that you could turn that into a banquet facility or a restaurant. Well, if you move tenants out there, if you build apartments and you put people out there before you create your banquet facility, guess what? They're not going to be happy about revelers pouring out into the parking lot at midnight all of a sudden when they've been living there for a couple of years. But if you have it there ahead of time, then you move to the nuisance, not the other way around. And they, you know, they know it's there and they can make their decision whether to live there or not based upon what's out there at the time. And that always goes smoother that way. Uh, Procedurally, uh, what we're doing here today, this is just the, the introduction uh, of this. I would ask the, the, the planning board to wait uh, before any vote whether to recommend. Typically, planning articles uh, get a lot of uh, work over. Uh, I know that your public hearings typically happen much closer to town meeting. It may be that the redevelopment authority, after getting additional input, after the redevelopment authority holds its own workshop meeting on this proposed uh, zoning change, which, which we intend to do as well, uh, possibly on a Saturday morning, so more people are available to come out. And certainly the planning board is welcome to attend, and anybody is. We're looking to do that uh, late in September. Uh, we may request that there be another public hearing to the extent that this gets modified so much that we don't feel that the people had a fair bite tonight to talk about it. So that may be a request to you, Mr. Chairman, from us. In other news regarding Tremont Nail, uh, we will be going forward uh, with a request to the, uh, it's already gone into the uh, Community Preservation Committee, but it's a request to spend $1.435 million on the environmental cleanup. Uh, so the town meeting would fund a bond, probably a 10-year bond, uh, to pay for the cleanup of the property. You know, one of my initial objections to buying the property back in 2004 was uh, the place is skunked, why the hell are we buying it? I'm actually pleasantly surprised that there isn't a zero or two whacked on at the end of that 1.435 million. I thought it was much worse. Uh, the cleanup would involve uh, injection pumping and, and treating of the uh, heavy metal contaminants in situ and the removal of some of the petroleum. Uh, it wouldn't involve uh, any work in the river. Uh, the fear is that dredging the river would lead to undermining the structures along the river, including the main factory building and also the freight building. We have an engineer's report that states that. Uh, that remediation plan is going into the Department of Environmental Protection as soon as the town administrator has a chance to review it and make a couple of edits and sign it. Uh, the only real funding mechanism we can use for this is community preservation money. We don't have the money in the regu regular budget for this. Uh, you know, we don't want to blow our stabilization fund on this. We've, that we've worked so hard to build up in case we have a true disaster like a hurricane. And so that's going forward. You may have heard about a lawsuit as well. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that, but there is one uh, that's been filed regarding ownership of the dam to try to resolve that issue. So 
there's a lot of things happening out there right now, so I just wanted to get people up to date on that. But I particularly wanted people to understand that any rents received from anybody go into a revolving fund to help fix up the place. They can't be expended by the town on anything else. Well, did you post this as a public? Yes. It's listed as public hearing. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much information, but I, I think probably the elephant in the room is the proposed uh, marijuana production. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's very controversial, and I think it could be <coughs> detrimental to your overall plan, but that's just me. Uh, yeah, we need, you know, I'll be honest with you, uh, the Redevelopment Authority has given direction uh, to the town planner to reach out across the country, find out what, what issues there have been or have not been with similar type production facilities. Uh, odor is a particular concern with a lot of people. You know, what have they done to uh, eliminate odor? Uh, how successful has it been? Uh, we know with any, uh, technology that works with stinky stuff, uh, you're going to get some odor. You know, is the technology of carbon filtration and, uh, you know, what was the other, what was the other treatment? There, were, there was a two-stage treatment. Uh, it was carbon filtration combined with... Uh, condensation? Hmm? Conden condensate? Yeah, I think there was a condensation as well. Uh, that's what the... Uh, marijuana facility folks told us they used. Uh, I know that... Uh, and airlocks, airlocks on the doors. Airlocks on the doors. I know that Director Buckland has reached out to facilities and uh, municipalities, rather, in Colorado uh, to get reports from government officials uh, out there about, you know, how has it worked? How are people in the neighborhoods? You know, are they affected? Are there issues? And we're waiting to hear back from them on that. So we're, we're not just charging forward blindly into this. The other thing people need to understand is that, unlike the crouton factory, where we uh, let them build the place, and then after the fact, everybody goes, oh my god, I smell garlic. When you're working with somebody in the community host agreement phase of any marijuana permitting, and we'd sign these with anybody who does anything with marijuana in town, whether it's retail, whether it's production like the, uh, the, the multi-stage thing that's going on in the industrial park, regardless of what their use is, uh, we have the ability to contract what we want in there. And if one of the provisions is thou shalt not stink, it's a lot easier to enforce a contractual provision than it is to let somebody build something, say, oh my God, it stinks, and then go running the DEP to do something about it. So under a contract, you can stop them from working until they solve an issue, for example. So that ability lies with the Board of Selectmen as the body that would negotiate a host agreement. So those are some of the things we're looking into and trying to, trying to get the information out. We'll certainly provide your board with that information, and we look forward to providing the public with it uh, when we get it during our own public uh, workshop meeting. And you've stated that right now that's not a, as of right use, but if this is successful, the redevelopment authority could override that? Well, I don't know about override that. Uh, no, it wouldn't override it because it would be a town meeting vote that would say that it's right. allowed. We, we only proceed with what town meeting said allows. Yeah, I don't see that, that uh, the redevelopment authority could override that. But Again, well, this I is thought you, you mentioned it would give you the authority to supersede zoning. No, I think what Ken was talking about was that subsequent zoning couldn't supersede agreements that were in place. Correct. Yeah which would be the case with any zoning you had. People would be grandfathered, mm -hmm. whether it's an overlay district or whether it's a change to the base zoning bylaw. All right, is there anyone here that would like to comment or question? Richard? I have, I have comments I want to Just make. Just identify yourself. Sure. sure. Um, hi, I'm Richard Swenson. Uh, Nine Churchill Ave. I also am a uh, member of the Wareham Redevelopment Authority. Mr. Chairman, you have three members of the Redevelopment Authority. I'm not sure if this is violating any open meeting law by discussing the matter with the majority of the member of the 
Well, I don't think that uh, making, may, a, making a statement to us would constitute I, I a deliberation. We're not deliberating anything, uh, anything that we're discussing here. Uh, in terms of perhaps advocating this has already been discussed and voted on by the Redevelopment Authority, so there's no policy being made here. Uh, it's just information being provided. May I continue? Yes, sir. Um, while I agree with a lot of what we've heard so far, I want to simplify this just a little bit. Um, in the last year, um, We've done a vision plan for Trey Montanale. Mr. Buckland has alluded to that. That plan was done with lots of public input. Um, it was put together and then presented to the public and it was very highly um, successful in its presentation and it was overwhelmingly supported by the public in its presentation. And that vision plan has phases, it has options, and it has flexibility on its implementation. Now through Mr. Buckland's efforts, through citizen committees, through the selectmen, through the establishment of the WRA, some work done by the CETA team before, even before that, we are now starting to make great strides in taking some concrete steps forward. We still haven't put anybody in there. We haven't done any, re any work on the site yet, but we, there's work being done now trying to get to that end. Unfortunately, the zoning for the current land does not match which, with the vision statement. And we are, we are totally bound and hindered by trying to implement that vision plan with that zoning. Now this change that's being proposed tonight or this over, overlay doesn't address specific uses. We're not here advocating for a specific use at all. We're just advocating for the proper zoning f that will support the vision plan. I know that the uh, marijuana thing is very contentious and there needs to be public debate and, and uh, input on that and that will happen. But until we can get our zoning to align with our vision, we're dead in the water and we can't do anything. I think Mr. Buckton just mentioned, or was it you, Peter, that mentioned, we've had three proposals and we think all three of them are unallowable as of today. I think the vision plan is sound. I think the vision plan is supported by the community, and I think it's up to this planning board to support Mr. Buckland's proposal so that we can continue to move forward. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Don Jepson, I, I'm here to lobby on behalf of the changing of the zoning as well as proposed. Um, and for the reasons that Richard said, uh, all those hang together and that's, it, without changing the zoning, really the redevelopment board is, is their hands are gonna be tied. They can't really do what the town has said was, let's do something with the property and get some money and get something in return. Um, what I would like to address is the subject of marijuana. And uh, I'm the same person who stood up at the special town meeting and said that the town shouldn't be involved with marijuana. I thought it sent a bad message to the kids. On the other hand, uh, uh, kind of done a reverse of my thinking on that. Uh, the townspeople voted for it. It was voted originally back in November when we had the presidential election, it came up then and the town voted for it. And uh, what has happened, uh, I applied to be on the redevelopment authority. And uh, as part of that process, I sat uh, in when the people came here from Organa Brands and they uh, sent uh, two individuals who were president domestic and president uh, of the international, which is basically uh, now that Canada has agreed uh, to allow uh, legalized marijuana. What I don't think that, what I think needs to be communicated is after meeting with these people, I came away and said, this is such an opportunity for the town. Um, and I've done a lot of research on them. Uh, they basically uh, uh, started out 
uh, very small in this business with a man named uh, Ralph Morgan, and he was a former EMT, and he was get involved with uh, the medical end of it, and uh, is very interested in the, the medical marijuana, and that's how he got started on this. And then he saw an opening and an opportunity, and he brought together two other people that he was familiar with, uh, two of which were at our meeting. Uh, the reins of this company were turned over to them uh, in April, and because uh, he, he was the CEO and they were co-CEOs at that time, and now uh, those two individuals that we met with uh, are going to be running Organa Brands, and he's going back to his original interest, which was the medicinal side of it. Um, after they did a presentation, uh, which was done on site, uh, at Tremont Nail, um, these individuals expressed an interest in the whole property. And I say that from a historical perspective. They were kind of fascinated, and Ken Buckland took them around and showed them the other buildings because they saw a lot of potential there uh, for what the property could be. And I know it sounds like it's a conflict, um, but that building that they were, are interested in occupying is basically an empty shell. It's just, and it's no historical value to it at all. And they've taken an interest in it, and you have to understand the type of business they have. It is very self-contained. Um, the odor problem or situation has to be addressed. That's, that's a, my only concern about it. But having spent time with these people that afternoon, I then invited them to go down to the National Marine Life Center because they had their families here. And we toured there and got to see the seals and turtles and all of that, and had some separate conversation with them. And uh, I can tell you, they're very uh, down-to-earth people. Uh, they understand uh, that in some ways they've been very lucky. Um, but when they went to leave, my wife said to them, uh, you know, your kids can watch this, because they had their kids with them online, and they can see the progress with these turtles and seals, which uh, six are going to be released this Thursday in Scusset Beach, if you have interest in that. Um, but one of the things that I liked is that one of them, my wife said, you could watch it online, is that one of the gentlemen said, can I make a contribution online? Um, these, this is a, such a good opportunity. They're interested in putting $1.5 million into that facility, and, they w and it's going to be like a laboratory situation. That's what it is. It's not recreational marijuana. There's not selling out the door, which was what I was originally opposed to, was the recreational marijuana. Uh, they are distributors and refiners and packagers, and they have to have all that security. Uh, when, when they stepped into the uh, disinfectant baths that we have down there at the Marine Life Center, I told them, I said, well, this is so you don't bring germs in and bring germs out, and that's when they said, we have airlocks. It's, so it's a very sophisticated operation. It's a scientific, and it's self-contained, and it's not going to be any signs. There's not going to be traffic. There's not going to be people hanging around. It's, uh, it's a very secure facility, and uh, the fact that this could generate money to hold up and keep the other buildings going is very important. But I, I do understand that there's going to be a lot of pushback on it, but I think what we really, really need is a lot of education as to what this facility is, because it's going to be self-contained. It's not, a, it's not going to be a, a place where people are going to come and be hanging around and, and smoking dope and, and anything like that. So that's it. I just see it as an opportunity. I just hope that uh, they don't seek out some other place, because all we have there is an empty building. And uh, they seem to be a class operation. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I want to point out that the uh the decision on who actually uses the property is based on requests for proposals, a public process that allows everybody to make a presentation to the town on the use of the site. And further to that point, uh, Mr. Chairman, the Redevelopment Authority did vote at its most recent meeting to authorize uh, the town planner and the town administrator together to put together a, a request for proposals for the steel building. Uh, and I spoke with the town administrator today, and he said he was getting that out this week. In fact, I think he had come up with something and has sent it off to you, to, uh, you for the particulars. Uh, so that's something that's going to be submitted this week. It'll be your, your typical 30-day RFP. Uh, 
we don't know who's gonna respond, who knows? Maybe somebody will come in with uh, some better idea that pays three times as much money, we can only hope. And to that end, if the zoning is changed to allow someone else that could come in and do something different with three times the rent. Like I said, we, we are hamstrung right now. Mm -hmm. so. <coughs> Malcolm Finney, this, this whole question is, is a little bit difficult for me. Um, as some of you know, a number of years ago, I initiated a program that was the um, Historic Iron Trail of Southeastern New England. And in doing so, I got together with numerous towns throughout this area who had a history of iron industry. Um, I had different people come down, visit, look at uh, Tremont Nail and so forth. And the one comment I, I always remember is, and this came from two separate people at two separate times, was that probably Tremont Nail was the most uh, important and unique um, asset the town had. Of course, they were looking at a vision for the future and so forth and so on, but also the history of it. It is probably the only existing original um, building that was related to the iron industry in southeastern Massachusetts, or southeastern New England, actually. Um, and we spent some time there um, back in 2014. Uh, a lot of us put a lot of dirty effort into cleaning up the factory and open it up as a, um, a museum. We had a little theater in there and so forth and so on. People responded very, very positively to what we had done. And I understand that we have to have something to finance it. I'm a little concerned because you said you don't know what's gonna go in there and that's where I'm concerned if we <coughs> allow marijuana in there, do we have the ability to control what kind of a processing plant or whatever is gonna go in there, or does somebody come along and they cross all the right T's and dot all the right I's and they come in there and they're gonna be obnoxious. You don't wanna bring in an industry there that's going to adversely impact what can be done to the rest of the property, and it is number one, a historic property and a historic facility. Um, I have a moral issue with it. I am not interested in um, supporting the drug industry. It bothers me that our governments have found that they can finance themselves on such things as tobacco, alcohol, drugs, gambling, and I don't want to see our town become involved in that. I don't want to see us to become part of the drug industry. Um, and, and that's where my conflict comes in. I would love to see something come in that can do something positively for it and, and it would absolutely prefer something besides um, an industry related to the marijuana industry or any drug industry or, or anything like that. I don't want to put a smoke shop in there or anything like that. I want something positive that people are going to uh, that if we can develop the rest of the property historically as it should be, um, and um, that it's not going to discourage that. So, that's my comment. Uh, to uh, further to what Mr. Finney said and his concerns were, uh, okay, well, if you allow marijuana there, you know, what are the limits? And one of the things I have heard from people is, well, what is the limit? Uh, you know, this company comes in, okay, will there be more marijuana? Uh, is that just gonna become the, you know, the, the pot epicenter of southeastern Massachusetts because you're allowing it there? Uh, I think to allay those fears, one of the things we should look into in the bylaw is limiting uh, the marijuana uh, use, if you will, to, the main, to that, main, that building. I think that would be smart. I, I frankly don't think anybody's gonna wanna come in and establish and put in modern chemical processes in the old mill building, for example. That's so prohibitively expensive that nobody in their right mind would even think of doing such a thing. Uh, 
but I do think there should be some kind of limitation where on the premises that use could be, and that could certainly be built into the bylaw. And I also think that there should be uh, some limitation on how many uh, marijuana establishments can be out there. I don't think there needs to be more than one out there. Again, I don't want to see the place just turn into marijuana. The vision plan calls for a multifaceted approach. You know, if you look at it, it calls for the factory building, the main factory building to possibly become an entertainment center. You've got the uh, packaging building. You've got the pickling building. All of those were contemplated for, you know, artist type things, studios, uh, perhaps light commercial use you know, where the, the, the artists could sell their wares, things of that nature. You've got the freight building that's contemplated as a restaurant or a banquet facility. And I think we want to stick to those things. I don't think we want to just, you know, go chasing the money all, all together. On the other hand, by the time, if town meeting passes the 1.435 million uh, to clean the place up, we'll be into that place for over three million bucks. And at some point, the taxpayers are going to balk at putting any more money into it. Uh, so it does need to start to s generate its own revenue to the extent that we have an opportunity here to do that. I think we, we'd be remiss to, to simply blow it off. My name is Angela Dunham. I am coming before this committee with four different perspectives. One, as uh, chairperson of the Wareham Historical Commission. The Wareham Historical Commission has, the tre has had the Tremont Nail Company on its agenda every month for at least the year, the last year, at least the last year, so that any concerns by the public or even towns uh, committee members could come and discuss the Tremont Nail property with transparency and respect for the Wareham Historical Commission. This did not happen regarding this particular proposal, and I'm very disheartened and disappointed that that is the case. The Wareham Historical Society, uh, Commission, excuse me, Commission, has oversight of all Wareham historical properties to protect and preserve, and we do to the best of our ability. I have personal history with the Tremont Nail property because I was chair of CPC for four years. And when CPC monies were used to redo the roof on two of the buildings, I was there, if not every day, every other day I attended all of the uh, management meetings on a weekly basis for that, uh, that project, the project manager from Boston came down and met with Robert Blair, who his, is the chair of the Wareham Historical District Commission, and myself. I had the workers there, the foreman actually, document everything that happened on that property every day in photography, and I have possession of all of that. I actually took it to town meeting and had it on display. So, uh, that being said, moving on from my other perspective as Historical Society President, which abuts the Tremont Nail property. I rent, I'm the rental agent for the Methodist Meeting House, and I rent to church groups and families that rent for children's parties and sh baby showers. We've had weddings at the Meeting House. We have five properties and we bring in over 200 elementary school age children through our four of our properties, which abuts the Tremont Nail property every year on field trips. And we talk to them about the history and the culture of our town, trying to bring some pride in their community. The Fearing Tavern, of course, is listed as one of those properties in this piece. Am I to understand that that's now withdrawn or it's still part of it? It's not part of it. Thank you. The His Fearing Tavern, of course, is, uh, its historical importance to this community has no equal. It has extreme importance to our community's heritage. It is a community treasure. Out-of-state guests contact me on a regular basis asking for information and requesting private tours through the Fearing Tavern. 
So it is not just townspeople, which sadly, many townspeople have never set foot in the, the Fearing Tavern while we are open for tours all through the summer. Another perspective I come to uh, speak to you about today is because I have been a school employee at the Freetown Lakeville Middle School for 39 years and they've just hired me back for my 40th year. Be 40 years. And so I come to you as a, from the perspective of being a school employee and working with children, middle school children. This past March, CNN came in to your Wareham Middle School where Harriet Sullivan, Wareham Middle School health teacher, was interviewed this past March by CNN regarding vaping and the vaping addiction threat. When I went in this past spring to substitute at the Freetown Lakeville Middle School, I was called in by administration to discuss the fact that the kids are now talking about jeweling in the hallways for me to be aware of what they were talking about and why. So it is a controversial and emotional issue. I do not have anything against medical marijuana. I do not have anything against the town making money. I understand that this has been a money pit and a sore thorn in the side of many people in this community. The other perspective and last one is as a taxpayer in this town. And from that perspective, the two taxpayer financed professional assessments of the Tremont Nail Company on the structural integrity and appropriate uses of the property, it was discussed as a historic park. And so that was my hope, and I suppose my foolish dream, as it turns out. I have faith in Ken Buckland's considerable professional resume. Because of glowing recommendations by a friend who knows Ken well, who worked for many years with Mayor Tom Menino in her capacity with the Boston Redevelopment Authority. And I have faith in Mr. Buckland's ability to bring in the appropriate tenants for that property to develop it as it should be. There are many other communities that have had, what should I call it, money pits in their midst. When we travel, when we go on vacation, we look for historic properties that have been restored. So for example, if you, any of you have ever been to Savannah, Georgia, Savannah, Georgia's waterfront down on Water Street is a remarkable rebirth of all of the mills. It is a thriving community teeming with tourists. Those buildings were falling apart and there was a person with a vision, one person with a vision who didn't give up. That one person persevered and got that entire waterfront restored to a place of community pride. <sighs> North Adams is another, or Adams, Massachusetts is another example. Meredith, New Hampshire, another example. You go up to the Lowell Mills, another example. I just went down to Dennis, down on the Cape, another example of properties that have been restored or at least renovated historical properties that bring in financial rewards to that community that had faith. Does it take time? Does it take energy? Money doesn't grow on trees. I applaud you for trying to find a financial solution to that property. I know that it has numerous problems because of what you have struggled with, having to do with the uh, environmental issues down there, and of course the dam, <clears throat> the dam. And uh, I appreciate the fact that you have to act on these financial opportunities as a town. If you did not take the initiative to act on these financial opportunities, you would find yourself voted out of office, I'm sure. As a business owner, as the daughter of business owners who made sacrifices, that I will not get into here today, to bring in money to put on the table, to keep people employed, I get it. 
Do I agree with putting it on that property? I do not. And it is, I guess, that cliche, not in my backyard. I'm thinking that, and please correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure you will, the municipal maintenance property has 28 acres, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what the zoning is over there, but much like the previous meeting that we just had, there was a gentleman who offered an alternative site that I think would make all parties happy. I'm asking you to please consider that, an alternative site, not to turn this financial opportunity away, the opportunity for jobs, but I'm asking you to find an alternative site respectfully. Thank you. Uh, you know, people have uh, suggested alternative sites. Uh, they've looked at, at other buildings in town. Uh, we, we were told we should shunt them off to Benny's. Uh, we were told, why isn't there space in the industrial park? There, there simply isn't a building of that size in the industrial park that's available now. One of the things that, uh, I don't know if people understand this, but a company like this that wants to come in uh, is looking for market share. They will have competitors. They may be the biggest bunch out there now, but there are other people doing some of the same things that they do in terms of the products that are manufactured and sold. What they're looking for is basically an empty shell of a building that's already up, doesn't require any permitting beyond the standard you know, host agreement with the Board of Selectmen, and so that they can get in there, get manufacturing, get market share, and be successful that way. That's why they're looking at us. Uh, they're looking, I believe, up in Salem as well. And I think they're also, you mentioned uh, North Adams as a place that was redeveloped. These guys are actually looking in Pittsfield. So they're looking for a place that's actually ready for them to basically go in and convert into a laboratory facility that they don't have to build, that they don't have to go through the permitting, the design, the this, the that, and the other thing. So that's why from their perspective, the Tremont Nail uh, sheet metal building is, is, a, is a perfect fit. So I, I just want to make sure that people understand that. Uh, this is why uh, there haven't been other places suggested to date. Hi, Jim Manese. Um, I, I understand uh, what a lot of people are saying about the opportunity to grab um, some quick bucks to help offset the costs and to improve the facilities there. Um, I also um, took a little time and went through the uh, redevelopment authority's uh, minutes, and I saw Mr. Buckland had been given um, direction to negotiate and to discuss leasing with uh, Organa for the property. Um, those were in the minutes, so anybody want to take the time and look at that. Um, we do have um, bylaws which say this is where we can have marijuana in town. I think that's in East Wareham and also the industrial parks. Um, I would strongly urge, I didn't say abandon this, but urge Organa to look at these areas and for alternative sites within the town and that would, you know, like to work with them and um, collect revenues that way. Of course, you couldn't, well, you could, but it uh, doesn't mean it would go towards the historic um, Tremont Nail area for preservation and repair. Um, uh, what about uh, general, um, what about zoning for general commercial? Would that meet the needs of what you're saying outside of the marijuana um, initiative which is being proposed? I don't think you want to drive through there. Well. <laughs> 
that I mean, I it, it, <laughs> well, I mean, commercial general is there's only a couple of areas in the commercial general that's allowed, but I mean, strip right. commercial, commercial general. I I don't think that the use is there. Well, I think they're very really similar to what you're looking for, though. Hmm. I, I think one of the important things is we want historic preservation. and We want to maintain the buildings as they right. in their historic context and in elements. I, so so we, that's the reason why we want to have special zoning for this Which area. Which is fine. I, I don't really have a big problem with that. Um, if you did rent that metal building, it would probably have to be sunsetted for a rental for this type of a use because down the road you're going to, uh, I mean, the company's going to come and put $1.5 million into the facility. They're going to want to be there a while, I would assume. But um, if you plan on doing housing or, or to make it a historical area and have groups come in and um, utilize the museum you might put in there or, or other, other uh, venues, um, would you have a sunset provision for the um, marijuana use in that area for that? Or, or is that something that's going to be there forever and, uh, and done? I mean. No, the, the, the idea is have a lease of five years, three years, with potential options. So that would be um, in the bylaw that uh, is not in the bylaw. Of, this would be in the well, but but I mean, could you have that? But for this, I guess you could always address the the zoning bylaw again in five years. And another thing I want to say is we, we're doing a lot of I, what I see knee jerk and haphazard zoning rewrite um it, it seems like it's coming up all the time and we just did a rewrite two years ago and and it, or we had a committee that got together to look at the zoning some of it's been implemented some of it hasn't but we're coming up with all these new things and um i think we should step back and and take a look again at what we really want for a vision and try to implement that and, and not, you know, be coming back time and time again and hammering out little particular, as someone said, like spot zoning issues. Um, it takes up a lot of time for people, and, and you're, you're all busy. I mean, you're busy, you're buried, everybody is. You know, just, just a little, just my two cents here. Thank you. Just, just to Mr. Menezes' point, uh, we do have, uh, I think we're just about done with it, uh, the latest iteration of the master plan and I think part of the uh, sort of the zoning things that you're seeing are, are sort of emanating from that as well I do know that what the zoning rewrite committee uh, eventually got to town meeting was passed by town meeting that was more in the nature of technical corrections uh, to fix issues that were within the bylaw for example we had use tables where we had blank boxes so did that mean you could do it? Did that mean you couldn't do it? If it didn't have a Y or an N, what the heck did it mean? That's all well and good. I'm just so so that, that's what that committee did, and so that's what they presented at the town meeting was a cleanup of the existing zoning bylaw. They didn't go into it uh, at the time in depth and, and spot, you know. Uh, I'm suggesting maybe we should do that. Mm -hmm. We should look at it as a, as a whole, not individual, you know, knee-jerk reactions to it. Well, we can grab a quick dolly here. I mean, look look at the issues we just had tonight on the um, solar arrays. You guys have a lot of latitude on that, right? But you have to implement what you do have for authority to regulate what happens at these places. Um, we, you know, we went ahead, we put the zoning in for that, and... Um, it's a big mess. I mean, you drive down Hathaway, you look down the little cul-de-sac, and you're looking at, you know, from, from the road from Hathaway, you're looking at the array, the solar array. And that was done, what, three years ago? So, again, I'm just saying we should, we should look forward into the future and, and have a, um, a vision of what we want and not knee-jerk. I mean, hey, one and a half million dollars, how much are you going to get a square foot for the rental of that building? Maybe seven. Seven? Seven dollars a square foot. What do you, how many square feet you got in there? 400, 800? 15,000. 15,000. That's pretty good. Pretty good income. 
what you get taxed is right? Well, uh, what, what we would get is a licensing fee, and that's something I neglected to mention earlier, is in the host agreement, uh, you would negotiate the annual licensing fee for this facility. That wouldn't go to the Tremont Neal Factory Revolving Fund. That would go to the town general coffers. So that would be direct income to the town, just like all the licensing is, just like liquor licensing, uh, you know, licensing for marinas, whatever, that, whatever it is, that goes into the town general fund. What's that, $105,000 a year would get for rent? At that price, yeah, about one hundred five. dollars And other, other companies, would you get generally the same amount of money? No. Uh, we've, we've tried this before, and it hasn't turned out this. We've rented it for a while. Okay. Yeah. Huh? $4,000 a year. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy Finney, uh, I live in West Wareham. I have a little bit of a different perspective on marijuana. Marijuana today, big marijuana is where big tobacco was a number of years ago. I would not believe one word that any of them told you. Now I have no doubt that they'll run a tight facility and they'll med mitigate the odor, but stop for a minute and think, why can they offer $68,000 a year in salary for somebody to work in a processing plant? Because it's drug money, pure and simple. If you've been to all the seminars I've been to, if you've worked at an emergency room for 45 years, you would see, I am ashamed to my soul that this town's people voted to allow marijuana in town. You'll find that many of these companies have applied for medical facilities that have never been built because the medical facilities then get the first go at the recreational permits. Um, I, I think that it's, it's a, uh, I understand the need for the money, but I've never lived my life for money. That's why I'll never be rich. I don't think it, it's a good fit there. That's a historical district. If they want to put it in a, hidden out of the way in an industrial park, fine. But they're going to get a lot more out of this than we're going to get out of this. And you can see in town how well we're doing with keeping the kids away from the vaping and the smoking and the alcohol by vision of the compliance checks they do and they bag the liquor stores constantly. This is just to tell children that your, your town is being financed with drug money, I just think it's a terrible, terrible thing. And I, I'm sorry that I just had to voice my opinion. I've seen the effects of it for too many years to let this thing slide. I'd like to have an answer as to whether or not the 28 acres that municipal maintenance has, if any of it can be carved out to accommodate a facility for them. Uh, Excuse me? It's not zoned for that. <laughs> but that's what we're talking about. We're talking about changing zoning. That's what we're talking about. If a piece can be carved out of that 28 acres to be rezoned then for that facility, and I understand that there is a place, I can't remember the name of it, it's, there's a, an industrial park off Route 28 down in West Wareham, what is it, Patterson? Patterson Brook. Patterson Brook Industrial Park, that there's a private owner down there. Now that cuts out the town. I'm not advoca advocating cutting out the town, which is why I brought up the 28 acres on Charge Pond Road. The delays inherent in designing, building, and so forth, a new facility, uh, would probably drive these people away. They wouldn't be coming to exist towns with existing buildings of a sufficient square footage and that were empty and in a shape that they could s simply come in, uh, set up their laboratories, and, and get, get off the ground. Uh, again, their goal is to get market share. I, I'm sorry, but I, I feel that it's hard to believe that a, a, fas a company that is international, making money off drug money, actually, that they wouldn't have the money to put up a space metal building, or am I mistaken in, in understanding that space metal buildings can be disassembled, unassembled, and reassembled? Then why couldn't that space metal building then be reassembled on another site? For example, a carved out, rezoned municipal maintenance piece that is out of everybody's way. I, I don't understand. So, excuse me. Am I being foolish in thinking that you can no. unassemble a you, middle building? You, you're you're straying a little far afield, but, no. but okay. But okay. But you're correct; they can be. But it's probably I not cost so. effective. And as far as Atlantic p boats go, when, uh, again, 
what are you trading for? What, what kind of a message are you sending to the kids in this community? I, nope. I'll ask. Yep. George, unfortunately, we have people dealing strictly with emotion. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 No problem. He is. <laughs> uh, I have to negotiate a contract with WCTV on behalf of the Board of Select, and I'm going to try to get a better sound system in here for everybody. What we have going on, what we have right now is we're dealing with an emotional subject. The bottom line is, unfortunately, this town voted 57% for marijuana. You know, so it's there. We have retail operations. We have a medical, which also has a retail now approved. All it is is there's an opportunity for the town to be able to actually generate some funds in which to develop that property. If the town doesn't want to do it, it's fine, but it's an opportunity. It's something that needs to be discussed and let the voters vote on it. I don't have a problem either way. I voted against the marijuana thing. You know, it's simple as that. But just because I voted against it, I can't stop it because 57% of people said yes. Uh, Born voted no. Born just voted back the other way again. Give everybody around the switch. And all I'm saying is that we thought we had a, a possibility of coming up with a program that will allow us to develop that factory. We've got nothing in 13 years. I worked with Matt for four years when I was on the Tremont Domestic Plan Committee. We couldn't get anybody to step up. Max program for the Tremont there requires a lot of money. Nobody stepped up. If you want the building to stay empty indefinitely, fine. But the problem is, is you've got to find some way to fund it. Uh, ideally in life, you know, you love to do what you want, how you want, but it has to be practical somewhere down the line. If you don't have any money to do it, and unfortunately all these things cost money, nothing happens. So all I'm saying is, Discuss it reasonably. Don't get overly emotional because you don't like marijuana. I don't like it, but that doesn't mean the majority of the people in town don't like it. And, and this is what you get. And all I'm trying to say is that if you don't, if you're unhappy with it, we understand it. But we're trying to come up with a way to do something that benefits the town long term. And most important for me is, and I've been very consistent for a lot of years now, is I want to do something that's sustainable. Uh, if you go and look around town here, how many places do we have that sell cigarettes? How many places do we have that sells alcohol? Those are drugs. I don't care what anyone else says. You know, and it's there. It's part of this country, unfortunately. You know, and we can't change it. None of us here can change that. You don't want to drink, you don't have to drink. But the majority of the t people in this town drink. And we have a lot of accidents on this road because people drink. That's all. Well, uh, one thing I, I do want to point I want to commend Ken for taking this effort farther than anybody ever has. Uh, for lo years, that property has languished with fits and starts on redevelopment, and uh, he's come forward and, and accomplished quite a bit in the time he's been here. Uh, I am troubled with, I know we're stuck with marijuana, and I know there's products, but I don't want to see that in the Main Street under the stench of marijuana production. If you can prove to me that it's not going to be welcome to Wareham, you get, let's see, as we come down 28, we get burnt coffee, then we get garlic, and then we get skunk. You know, I don't want to see that happen. You want to head in the other direction because that will benefit the garlic people and the coffee people. <laughs> and then you can keep going. You can, facetious, th but th then you keep going, you get CMS. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you know, one of the things that uh, we should also point out is, you know, we talked briefly earlier about not, not only these people being interested, but also uh, possibly a distillery, which, you know, that might carry some odor issues as well, uh, but also a potter's. Uh, cooperative. Uh, we heard a proposal last week at the Redevelopment Authority from a, a part of co-op, and she's going to come back with a, hopefully a business plan that we can take a look at. And you know, so, so and I asked her straight out. I said, "Look, you know, we're thinking about this thing. Is that something that would deter you from bringing, you know, your your co-op plan? And you know, would it make it more difficult for you to get people in there?" And she said, "Absolutely not." Uh, I think people need to understand that what would change out there if there were a marijuana facility, presuming there was no odor, the difference between what it looks like now and what it would look like then is you would have probably 15 cars parked out in front of the place. You would have uh, 
a small sign that said Organa Brands. And they don't, in Massachusetts, of course, you can't have pot leaves on your signage. Uh, what they have is sort of a, a stylized uh, beaker with a couple of leaves coming out of it. And that's the difference between what it looks like now and what it would look like if these people moved in. That's essentially the change. You're not going to get crazy traffic out there. Uh, products are not going to, you know, the material's not going to be brought in in 18 wheelers. It's not going to be uh, brought out in 18 wheelers. It's going to be, uh, I think they talked about processing 12 tons of product a year was their goal. So, uh, you know, it, it's going to be limited impact upon the property. And to my understanding, I, I don't think the arts community is particularly bothered by marijuana. In fact, they, most of them seem to have been druggies for about the past 200 years, if you go look back at Baudelaire and some of the French poets. The, the other thing that concerns me is, I don't know how many times I've heard from government that all the fees are gonna go back into the program. And I've yet to see it happen <laughs> in any venue. Have you met our town accountant? in any venue <laughs> there'll be pilot fees there'll be admin fees and <laughs> I, I not on the rents she's, I vicious, about that. she's fully, vicious about that stuff I understand fully that we need a shot in the arm to get this place off the ground I just good evening good evening uh, my name is Mike Clements um, I actually am against marijuana as well. Um, probably one of the younger ones here, I guess. But in uh, any case, um, I'm going to tell you, I, I know what I realize we, that we as a town voted to, uh, voted to approve it. Um, I was right. It was, well, I believe, uh, 57, 42, 43, whatever it was. Uh, so that means that 43% of this town did vote against marijuana. And, and that, that you know that group should be should have some input into this into this and what what we should be doing with marijuana um, so I I believe this location just is not really appropriate for the for that use um, I have a couple of concerns uh, first off uh, you know we just says it will be a manufacturing facility um, my, my limited research of what I did for manufacturing marijuana I Looked up that uh, is they use isopropyl alcohol and they they use that to condense it, which you know if it's done under pressure is a is an explosion hazard. I don't know whether they're intending to do that type of process, but um, that's what I you know for, to make some of the to make some of the products that is what they, typically what they use. Um, to, to your point, they were actually, I, I figure out, listen, I'm no scientist, so this stuff goes in one ear and out the other, but they were bragging about some different type of process they used, if I remember correctly, when they had uh, their meeting with the Redevelopment Authority. My uh, next question is, is does anyone had a, had a, um, any conversations with the Mass Historic Commission? As, as you noted, it is a, a, prop, a property that's under the Federal Register, it's not actually on the federal register, it is nominated as a federal register. I have the documentation right here. It is, however, on the state register, which means that um, you know they list as a on their on their list, and they probably should be consulted on any use of this property um, because there was state funds used to procure the property, and you, you said you've had state funds doing some of the studies and whatnot. I you know. I looked on the Mass Historic website. Um, it says that you know, you know, if local local communities use state funding, they they should be looking at that. They should be reviewing it. That was my interpretation. Now I you know I'm not a lawyer, but I know you are. <laughs> um, that's why that's why I brought up this the Secretary of the Interior's re standards for rehabilitation of historic structures. Uh, yeah. In the well, la well, last comment to that is that. It is listed as the Tremont Neal Factory okay. District, which the property encompasses. Sorry, find them. The entire property on where the where the Tremont Neal Manufacturing Facility was, and the Pickling Building, and all those buildings on that side, as well as going down to Mayflower Ridge, and then across the street next to the pond. So uh, that's the the historic property of the district. So that actually would include the property that was 
the building, the steel, the steel mill building that was constructed. So I, I would think that, uh, I'm just saying I, I would think it'd be wise to, before you go too far down the road, at least consult with them to, to see if, you, if, you, if there's any applicable. I, I will say, I think we're getting close to the time yes. we're gonna get thrown out of here. So if I could. Uh... I just have a quick question. My name is Pam Foley. I was wondering, can you expound anything, any more on these jobs that are going to become available and how they, what kind of uh, credentials are they going to have for 68 we, We've asked, dollars? we've actually asked them, uh, and this, this will be information that should be available and, and we, we certainly will want available for the Redevelopment Authority's workshop meeting. Uh, we've asked them for a, uh, a fairly detailed uh, business plan, if you will. That's going to be part of how we negotiate the host agreement with them as well, uh, because we're going to want to lock in some of these things. Uh, everybody promises, mm -hmm. few deliver, but when you get them, when you when you when you handcuff them with a contract, that makes it more likely you'll get what you want, and that's what the host agreement is. It's a contract with them. Uh, so I've actually asked Ken to reach out to them and say, okay, you say between 40 and 70 jobs, you know. At the low end, how many of this, how many of that, how many of the other things? Uh, I mean, one of the things that I think the selectmen, I, if I can change my hat a little bit here, would probably demand in a host agreement is 24-hour security. And by that, I don't mean an alarm system. I mean, I mean somebody walking around the site. And I gotta tell you, one of the, one of the things that drove me crazy was going out there a couple of months ago and seeing that somebody had hucked a couple of bottles through a couple of the windows in the freight building, which is where we're planning to hold the, the Tremont event. Right now we've got them boarded up with plywood and municipal maintenance is gonna wait until like the day before the event to put up some plexiglass over it again because they're worried that if they did it, you know, this week, that some idiot would go out there and do it all over again. So aside from the security, what other type, what other, what else can you expound on that they mentioned? Well, I mean, basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna run a laboratory facility. They're gonna need laboratory assistance. Uh, they're gonna need people to physically handle the, the material. Again, I don't have a detailed roster of the jobs, but we've asked them for that, and we will have that information available. Thank you. So initially, uh, you said you would be coming back with more information regarding this, so you wish a continuance? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're looking to get them out uh, some Saturday in, in uh, the, la the latter part of September. So we would probably ask you to continue the hearing until sometime in October for the final iteration of the bylaw because we want to take everything into account, not just what we've heard tonight. Uh, you know, not everybody can get out on a Monday night. Uh, you, you've got a lot of other people that I'm sure would like to weigh in on this, and I think a Saturday morning meeting for the Redevelopment Authority would be helpful in that regard. I think more people would be able to get to something that happened at 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning than uh, something that happens at apparently 11 o'clock on a Monday night. So uh, if you'll bear with us, Mr. Chairman, we can get you that information. On the date? Excuse yes. Me, the date or the... Uh We had talked about it, uh, September 22nd as the workshop. Right. Would the 24th be too soon? September 24th, the Monday after the workshop. Might be a little quick. Are you going to want to rewrite the rewrite the bylaw on a Sunday? I didn't think so. Yeah. I love it all done on Friday. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> You have to have a meeting here so many days before town meeting or else it doesn't work. Well, that's what I'm trying to... Well, yeah. that's what this one was for, yeah. the opening of the hearing. Yeah, no, but no, we just have to have a public hearing before town meeting. Yes, but I think you still have to have like 10 days or something, if I remember right. I don't... Because this is a bylaw. It hasn't been past practice. I know, but I believe this is a bylaw. I think you're going to have to do that. Well, the 8th is Columbus Day, according to this... Uh, Oh, calendar. You always run into that problem. So, is the board amenable to a different week for October the 15th? Sound good? Sure. a workshop. We have to. <clears throat> well, and when's town meeting? 29th? 22nd. 22nd. Oh. 22nd. <clears throat> So 
So that would be the week before. Motion. <laughs> yeah, got it. I'll just run it. Um, Nancy McHale, just one question. Looking at the redevelopment authority's minutes, there was a question of um, GATRA looking at the facility. We already found another home for them. They took over the old municipal maintenance barn uh, that's the other side of the middle school. Okay, so we're getting revenue from them on a different site yep. from the town? Yes, and they've also, uh, actually I'll let Ken speak to that because he's the one who negotiated the deal with them. What are we getting, Ken? Uh, I, I actually don't know the details on that because that's part of the town administrators. It's under negotiation. <coughs> the original, Grand just to so understand, the original piece was, Gatcher was looking, Plymouth uh, basically threw Gatcher out, this issue was in Plymouth, so they needed a, a last minute emergency place to put their buses for that area. They came to Wareham, I, I spoke to Frank A, and uh, jokingly I said, well, when we look at the steel building, I brought them down there. They had interest, they brought their people down, and then what happened was we had this other offer, which was probably easily maybe 20 times the value, if not more. And then we looked at the, like where the wrestling room and stuff is, the old, the old piece there. I think that was the old municipal building. Is that right? It's the old, it's the old town barn. Yeah. I think the, uh, town barn. So part of the reason for the rezoning, I think, was because a transportation center was threatened for the site. So the yes. Funds. Okay. All right. Thank you. There you go. Howard <laughs> uh, Smith, West Wham. I wasn't going to talk, but I've heard a couple of other things that I have to bring out. Um, I also heard there was no explosion process and uh, capabilities and so forth. Uh, I happen to have three fire science degrees in my family that I paid for, and I'm going to utilize one of them right now. Butane propane, the most popular extraction process, involves use of these flammable and potentially explosive substances as the solvent to separate THC from the plant. Although extractors must have closed loop system design, off gassing does occur when the collection cylinder is opened and hash oil is scooped out. <coughs> CO2 extraction, this type of CHT, uh, CHC, excuse me, extraction doesn't require flammable substances, but the machines operate at pressures as high as 10,000 pounds per square inch. If not installed or designed correctly, extractors can explode, not, okay, causing destruction and death. Extraction equipment, there are no listed or performance-based standards for extraction equipment. Engineers can disagree on safety requirements and will sometimes use different codes as a basis for equipment review. Insufficient training, extraction operators are not required to be trained, nor are there any accredited certification programs for mar marijuana extraction operation. Consistency is lacking. I'll leave it at that. I won't go any further because I know it's getting late. I'm getting tired of this either. <laughs> just, uh, just, briefly, yes. just briefly to the point, I do know that uh, Director Buckland has reached out uh, to the Wareham Fire Department to get their input as well on this. It's, it's, it's not a topic that's being ignored. That has been one of the suggested uses for that property by the detractors too. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I, th I, think, I think just gasoline was proposed for the uh, type of experimentation you're talking about. <laughs> last, last question. Everybody can go. If this thing goes through, Ron Dunham, if this thing goes through uh, and they want to have this uh, steel building, are they going to fix this thing up? Oh, is the town going to fix this thing? You mean are they going to pay for the building? For the whole thing, yeah. Yeah, it would be a triple net lease. They would be responsible for uh, maintaining the building, doing everything inside the building, and they would be responsible to pay the lease and the taxes. taxes and utilities. There would be no cost to the town. Okay. So if, if they're going through all that, and that isn't the greatest building over there because it's been there a while, 
why can't they just go to another place, put up a foundation, and put up a couple walls, and they're redoing the whole thing anyway? Well, you know how long it takes to get things to the planning board. <laughs> uh, motion was made to continue to October 15th. Public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Another motion? Seeing a motion to adjourn? I would. Was there a second? We're looking at the 20. All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned at 11.07.